Hello. Today I'm going to show you a tracker that I use every single day in Notion without fail, and it is my productivity tracker. This tracker basically rates my level of productivity every single day, and every single week I calculate my average output input rate of productivity with a formula. That's essentially what it is. Also, what I want to add to it is my sleep tracker to basically compare if my sleeping is affecting my productivity at all, which I kind of already know the answer to, but I wanted to do something with my sleep tracker. I never use it and I felt like I needed to do something with it. So here it is. Let's get into it. So first of all, here's my productivity tracker. This is not mine, but I, I made a little example for this video. So first of all, you can see this right here means it is a linked database. This is a linked database from my productivity tracker. Down here is the actual tracker. This is the bulk of my input. So essentially how this is set up is every single page is roughly a week. You can do this any way you'd like, but for me, I use Sunday through Saturday. Pretty straightforward, so that these properties here can make some sense. So each uh, property is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and at the end, I calculate my average productivity rate for the entire week with a formula, and we'll get to that in a second. So as you can see, everything's a little bit hard to look at, but really it's kind of simple. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different selections. Each day when I'm done working, I go back and I figure what is my overall productivity for that day. So the nine selections I can pick from are my output with the graph going up is increased. My input is also increased. So that's like the best case scenario. Also, I could have my output increase, but my input stay the same, which is symbolized by this lock, or my output could increase, but my input decrease, and so on and so forth. Basically, and I'll show you a key up here to explain the color coding. So my average output I wanna do every single day is 1200 words. My average input, I wanna read and consume content and find one to two substantial insights. So if I end up really going deep with research or just listening to a lot of podcasts one day and I have gathered like three, four, five different insights that I've never, then they have to be substantial. Like I, I've never really come across them before. I would probably put that my input had increased above average. If it is less than one or two, say I, I didn't really listen or consume anything that day, it would be a decrease. It's pretty straightforward. The emojis, I already went through this, but I also want to show you that when my output is above average, that is why it is green. So even if my input is below average, but my output is above average, I will still consider that a good day, an above average day, because really I'm focusing on my output. Now there's only one scenario where my output is down, is decreased, and it is still an average day in my eyes is when my input has increased. So from there, what I kind of like explained, I put into numerical value so that my formula can grab onto something and give me a number value or a productivity rate and return to me an average at the end of the week. So right here in my formula, I'm going to say if at any point a selection contains an increased output, I'm gonna give it the numerical value of two. Whenever it is average or a lock, I'm gonna give it a zero. And whenever it is down, I'm gonna give it a negative two. Now there is a scenario that I just explained where my output is down, my input is up, I'm actually gonna give that a one. Now from there, each day of the week is gonna have this numerical value. So if we come back down here, these greens are all twos. So my formula is gonna see Sunday, output up, input stays the same, it's gonna give me a two. On Monday, it'll give me a two as well, and on Tuesday, 
and on Wednesday, sorry I didn't turn off my notifications, it's going to give me actually a 1 because you can see the output went down, input went up. Thursday a 2, Friday looks like a 0, and Saturday a 2. Now what it's going to do is calculate all those numbers through the week, give me a sum of those numbers, and then translate a result from there. Here's how that works. So of course, if I have twos throughout the whole week, there's seven days in a week, 14 is going to give me a perfect score. Zero is going to give me base average. Negative 14, all negative twos, are going to give me an awful rating. So I wanted to be a little bit more nuanced than that. So I went in and decided that everything between zero and seven sum is going to give me a slight increase return. So it will return something like this, the slight increase with a little plane going up. That means my productivity was slightly increased, but not a lot. On the other hand, if it's between 7 and 14, I'm going to return a full increase in productivity. And the same going down 0 to negative 7 and negative 7 to 14. Now let's actually use this and we'll get into what's down here in a second. I'm going to add this week. Up here I basically am trying to visualize each week in a different way. I'm trying to visualize it by month. You can see here June, July, August. We're going to add another week in June because that is this month. Let's say 6, 7 to 6, 13. I just want to add the date real quick so my sorting can understand. 6, 7 to 6, 13. And now you can see in each one of these blocks, you can actually view the weekly productivity average. Here it is increased. This one is a slight increase. But when I add a new uh, entry, it's just going to say average and it will keep changing through the week from there. So let's start inputting this imaginary week. By the way, I also made another view for this week, so you can just input what is this week and also this month. So let's just do this week. Let's say in this example, I had average output and increased input just keep going down the list here. Say this day, maybe I didn't have as much output, but an average amount of input. And you can see how my productivity is already changing as I am inputting selections. And it will keep doing that until I get to the end. And it looks like I have an increased productivity for this week, which is good. Let's go back to all. Now up here, you can see how it changed to increase. Now there's all these little check boxes here that I'm going to go through. Sleep in, sleep average, undersleep. This is asking me what my overall sleep was for the week. In order to understand what my overall sleep was for the week, I have my little sleep tracker here. Now I'm, I don't use this very often and I don't really like using a sleep tracker every single day and tracking my sleep every single day for my whole life. I don't think it's necessary, but I do use it for one week and then I erase the entire database and I start over the next week and I'll show you what I mean. So in the sleep tracker I have each selection is one day into the next. So I start Sunday and I go Sunday into Monday, Monday into Tuesday, Tuesday into Wednesday, Thursday into Friday or sorry, Wednesday into Thursday and Thursday into Friday. Let's add a new entry for Friday into Saturday. The first property is going to be alarm set. So this is the, the alarm I want to set for that day. Let's say Friday and I want to set the alarm for, or I'm sorry, I want to set it on Saturday for 6 a.m. This estimated sleep time is going to automatically update me and tell me what time, what is the absolute latest time I should go to sleep the day before. 
and it's telling me 11 p.m. should be the latest. That gives me about seven hours of sleep, which is good to know. Now, when I wake up the next morning, I'm gonna input when did I actually go to sleep? So let's say I actually went to sleep at 10 p.m. that night, and I woke up on the 13th at 7 a.m. That's a lot of sleep. So it's gonna give me a result of excessive sleep, which it is, I, that's nine hours of sleep. And I have a little dreams category to track my dreams. So now that I have this whole week already inputted, I can look at my results and see that I pretty much, even though there's two days that are excessive, I had a pretty decent sleep this week. So I can go up here and fill in from this week, I had an average sleep. And you can click the check boxes right here. You don't have to click inside of the entry. Now, if we really wanna analyze what my productivity rate is per day, for instance, I wanna know what days of the week I'm most productive, what days of the week I'm not so much. That's what this is for. What this is, is a link, another link to database to our main hub. In board view, except this time I am categorizing it by day of week. So we have Sunday through Saturdays. And this is gonna give me every single Sunday that I've put into my database. And it's gonna plop out all of my productivity rates, all of the selections I've made for all of my Sundays, Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, you get it. So let's look at all my Sundays. It looks like I'm pretty good on Sunday, or this example is pretty decent, not a lot of negativity on Sundays. I'm pretty productive on Sunday. Then you can go into Monday. You can see maybe not so much on Monday, average to below average. Now let's go down to like Friday. Friday looks pretty bad. Not very productive on Fridays. So this is just another way to look at sort of a bird's eye view of your productivity. I'm going to link this template down below. And like I said, this if you want to know about this productivity, uh, weekly productivity formula, it's basically what I just explained to you the um, numerical values and then translating those numerical, those sums from the week into a text value. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask.